my personal feelings are uh, until the people recognize that the power lies within the Constitution and within them to stand up and do something about this, when people nullify this pretended legislation, when they refuse to submit, who's Whose pants is TSA going to stick their hands down if everyone says, you're, you're not doing that to me? Yes. Find someone else. Are, are they going to probe each other? Are they going to grope one another? Well, what they did the first year that uh, it was the first Thanksgiving after they put all the naked body scanners in, we started organizing an opt-out campaign, and that started going through the web. It looked like it was picking up a lot of momentum. And so what they did was they just shut down all of the scanners, all of the searching procedures on the busiest travel day of the year because they didn't want to see people opting out and shutting the system down. So we do have power. And one of the things that people can do is to support the Constitutional Sheriffs and Police Officers Association that... Sheriff Mack has. He's got a legal defense fund for you. Is there anything that we can do for you other than when I talked to you initially, you said that you would like prayer, that you were not seeking out the spotlight. You're not trying to be the tip of the spear on this. And obviously it was just your first exposure to the organization. But is there anything that people can do directly to help you? You know, I would, I would love to see, see people first and foremost uh, hit their knees and, and, and intercede on my behalf. I mean that sincerely. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, write your own uh, elected officials, whether they be elected chiefs or elected sheriffs, elected uh, governors, senators, whatever the case may be, and voice your opinions and let them know you don't want to be subjected to the same thing that these other people are being subjected to. The true victims in this uh, matter is, is my citizens within my village. My heart goes out to them. We only have a, a meager 252 citizens. It's a historic village. Bless their heart, 125 of them signed a petition showing their solidarity for our police department and our efforts to clean up our town. Wow. And that, that means the world to me, and no one can ever take that away. They might take away my job, but they won't take away uh, the fact that I have the support of law-abiding citizens who want to be left alone. And, you know, yes. at the end of the day, that's all I think anyone wants, is just to be left alone. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, they don't want people getting into their business and telling them how to live. I, I can't tell you, Police Chief, how much that means to people. We are tired of being seen as the enemy by our own government. Uh, the, the same sort of thing that you experienced at the airport. We're experiencing that everywhere. We experience it not just at the airport. Unfortunately, we experience it on the streets most often from our various police departments. We see these reports coming in all the time from across the country. I can't tell you how much we appreciate what you've done and the integrity of standing up for the Constitution, doing something that controversial. It shouldn't be controversial, but uh, we hope that people will support the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association, and we hope that people will support you in prayer, and you have our prayer tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Police Chief. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So we wanted to talk to Sheriff Mack and find out what this controversial political organization is that trains peace officers and sheriffs to respect the Constitution. So here's Sheriff Mack. Well, Sheriff, lay this out for us exactly what happened to Police Chief Harger as he's coming to the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association meeting. This is literally the TSA getting hold of a sheriff, a buddy, going behind his back, a back groom backdoor deal, firing a good, honest, Christian, constitutional chief of police who was a, the only thing he did wrong during the time he left town to the time he got back was to attend a constitutional convention with the CSPLA. And this is the reason we had this meeting, was one, to establish a resolution to put the federal government on notice that they're not going to do anything like this in our areas. Mm -hmm. We now have a resolution. You've got to post this on Infowars.com. We have it. We have eight things that these sheriffs, we have 41 public officials, now 42, and it's counting. We get more every day. But after this conference, the sheriffs and chiefs of police and peace officers and county commissioners and everybody who attended this, there was about 75 people, all agreed that this was the right thing to do, that we were going to put the IRS on notice, we're going to put the federal government on notice, that they're not going to be able to commit crimes in our jurisdictions anymore. Yes. And now we get this blowback and this this happening to one of our officers. We've been praying and praying and fighting and praying and fighting and praying so that these sheriffs and this kind of chief of police would stand for principles of freedom, stand for their oath of office. We now have this happening, 
It's starting, and this is a peaceful res- revolution. It's a peaceful solution, and we've got to have everybody on board, or we're not going to make it. We've Absolutely. got to have your help. I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's time for people to take a stand. They want to know what to do, and when good, honest men like this are persecuted because of their quote-unquote right. quote, political affiliations for going to an organization. Right. When we went to San Antonio for the concealed carry rally down there, Alex Jones yeah. and Anthony Gucciardi pointedly asked the police chief and the guy standing next to him who was uh, uh, also in the police department, would they confiscate firearms illegally if ordered by the federal government or by someone else to do so, or would they obey the Constitution? They refused to answer. They dodged it. They said, well, that's a hypothetical scenario. We all know that police and the military train in hypothetical scenarios all the time. And as Anthony pointed out to them, he said, "It's your oath to the Constitution is not a hypothetical. It's an absolute. That's right. And so when we don't stand, we have to stand behind these people. Yes. That's exactly what we're doing, and that's exactly what we said at our conference. And we even have in the resolution that these men, these brave men and women, we have Sheriff Elliott from Texas, the the only female sheriff that attended. She signed on to this, and the very first one was, we will not allow or tolerate or put up with the federal government making a a registration law about uh, guns. Then the next one, number two, was confiscation of weapons. Again, do your listeners really want to support the solution? Yes. We have the solution in place, and when our, when our members are harassed by the government or arrested, just like Sheriff Finch was, and when they're fired, like Chief Harger was, we have got to have people available. We've got to have a legal defense ready for these people. That's the other thing we discussed along with this resolution to get our um, – to stop the, the federal government's criminality. And then the other one was to establish a well-funded legal defense so when these CSPOA officers take a stand, that they'll have somebody backing them up and defending them for what they did. And that's what we're doing. We have the solution. I'm asking every one of your listeners. And I want to remind – you join us? And, and Sheriff Mack, I want to remind people that you have taken this to the mat. You have challenged the federal government's unlawful orders all the way to the Supreme Court, and you won. That's right, and we'll do it again if we have to. But the thing of it is, we're going to stop suing and we're going to start doing. Yes. And if your listeners are interested in the doing part of this and having them also have their rights protected by constitutional chiefs and sheriffs, that's why we're called the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association, because we want chiefs on board, too. We want patrol officers on board, and we, want, we will train people properly to where when you ask them, will you confiscate guns if ordered to do so, they will say absolutely, and the people who have attended our conferences will tell you absolutely not. And we had sheriffs there from Utah and all over the country. Those sheriffs from Utah are ready to do business. And they, they were, let me tell you, Sheriff Tracy, the president of the Utah Sheriff's Association, at lunchtime, told me and several other people, I came here, I flew all night long to get here from Washington, D.C., where he had a meeting. He, he took a red-eye flight. He says, I am so glad I made it. The weather was bad, but I made it. I was 85% on board. Now I'm 100% on board the constitutional sheriff movement, and I'm ready to do business. Where do I sign? The wheels are turning for freedom. Let's make it happen. CSPOA.org. Thank you very much, Sheriff Mack. Thanks. See you soon, David. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, like Chief Harger, anyone who's flown and many people who have just walked the streets of our cities has experienced the kind of power-tripping, lawless law enforcement officers that we come across on a daily basis. The TSA is the best example of that. And once we get to the point where they start prosecuting honest officers, where they can come against even law enforcement officers vindictively like this, we have really reached the end of the rope. You need to get involved. You need to support him in prayer. You need to support CSPOA.org with your money. And if you want to follow this story and help to support getting the word out, support Prison Planet TV. Become a subscriber. Right now we have a special for five months, but it's a way that you can follow this story and others like it. We understand where this is going, and Chief Harger saw it crystal clear. 
He saw the tyranny as he was flying and what he experienced when he came back. And he also saw what can happen when good men come together and swear to uphold the Constitution. Stand with us and tune in tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll have an update.